Okay, here's some more of section uh, 4.6. This is number 33, so we're going to do the uh, secant. So that's the reciprocal of the cosine. Remember, S and C go together, so that's so we went over the cosine, so we'll graph the cosine first. That would be our reference function. And um, we have a, just a basically a, a amplitude, amplitude of 2. Hmm, I have time going to get getting this in the scale, so I'm just going to use, I'm, I'm just going to reduce my scale a little bit. Uh, let's put it down here. Uh, okay, I don't like that that much. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So my period is going to be 2 pi. So because there's not that, and nothing changing with the period, it's just the amplitude of 2, so this is 2 pi. Uh, this is y, this is x. So we divide that up into pi and then into force, okay? Something like that. Pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And I can put another one in here so I can catch this. So I'll make this. Okay, just so I can get a whole psych. So I can watch this whole thing. You know, we can go this direction also. And let's call this See the period, it's the amplitude is 2. I'll try to make this a little, no, I'm just going to, the problem is I'm just going to have, I'll call this 2. I'll call this negative 2. Okay. Just so it comes out halfway decent. Again, I should have probably moved this down a little bit lower. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Cosine, and that's about it. So we just start at, to graph the co 2 cosine of x, we've got to start at 2. Normally we start at 1. Now again, we divide this up. This is going to be one whole period, one whole cycle. So we just divide the uh, 2 pi divided by 4 is just pi over 2. And that's the length of each of these subintervals. And we normally start at 1, but since it's going to be 2, we start at 2. Down back there, 0. Back, 2. And then I'm going to go one more. So this will be my cosine. And it would be nice if we could do these all on the same scale so we could get an idea what they are, but just trying to make it practical so it fits on the page here. And I did a little bit more than one period. That's one period. I just did a little bit more. Uh, because when I put the um, asymptotes in, they're going to be over here. They wanted you to graph two periods of these. Doggone it. I didn't read my directions very well, did I? So on the other problems, um, it's okay. One period's fine, fine for, for me. Uh, the directions are two periods. I'll try to do those on the next problems. You just repeat it, so you could just, you'd have to change your scale. I've got this big enough so you can see it easily, so if I draw it a little bit smaller, it's not as good to see, but... I'm only doing one period, sorry about that, so excuse me. But for my class, it's all right, just do it like, like I'm doing it, that'd be good, you get the idea. Okay, now Miss Margala might want you to do it too, so you guys can negotiate with her. I don't think she'll mind as long as it's nice and neat. And you show that there's a little bit more. So I, I did I did one and a quarter of a period there. Okay. So sorry about that. Okay. This is the main idea. If you get all that and see all that, I think you'll be in good shape. You would just continue this over. So I'd have to, obviously, I'd have to make my scale a little bit smaller to show two full periods. Or I'd have to, like, you know, you know, I'd squinch it in, or I'd have to use another sheet of paper. I don't want to do that. So I think this would give you a good enough idea. So for my class, just do it like this. This would be fine.
Okay, here's number 35. And I'll, I'll try to do the next one, the next couple ones, I'll try to do those uh, with two periods so you can see kind of what they mean. So here's 35. Uh, so we're going to use this cosine. Uh, so here the here the amplitude is just one, but I have to find out what the heck the period is going to be on this one. So uh, remember the period equals 2 pi over b, that's 2 pi over 1 third. If I multiply, that's the same thing as 2 pi times 3 over 1. So that's going to be 6 pi. So that's going to be the period. Now, now what are my subdivisions going to be? Well, I would take that 6 pi and divide that by 4. And that looks like that's going to be 1 and 1 half pi. Okay. Or 3 pi over 2. All right, so I'll have to do a little bit of creative um, graphing here or, or sectioning my graph. So let's do this. I'm going to graph this thing up to how I section it off. That's why this is x. And this is going to be my, my full pair to be 6 pi. So let's start by 6 pi. And my halfway point would be halfway in the middle. So what's half of 6 pi? 3 pi. And if I divide 3 and a half, 3 and a halves, I should, I should get 3 halves pi. Or 3 pi over 2. So then we can think of this as 3 pi over 2, this is 6 pi over 2, that's 12 pi over 2, so this should be probably be 9 pi over 2. Okay. Okay, 3 pi over 2, that's 6 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, and 12 pi over 2. That sounds about right. So those are my subdivisions. Uh, my period is going to be 1, so I'll make this 1 here, 1 and negative 1, just so it's a little bit easier to see. And, oh, I forget, i got to go. An extra one for the cosine. So let me, sorry about that. I was, so let's add another 3 pi over 2. So uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So that would be 15 pi over 2. Okay. That should work out all right. So that would be like 7 and a half. So I'd be adding 1 and a half to 6. I'd get 7 and a half. So that should be okay. All right, and then let's, so let's graph this cosine. And again, that's just a good old one, so we start on one. No problem here. So we start on one. Go down to zero. Negative one. Back to zero. Back to one. And then do the zero thing again. Okay, there we go. And try it like that. Okay, so that's a little bit more than a, a, a full period. We start here. One full period is, you know, you start and you end up where you started. So we start here and we end up there. That's one period. You could think of this as one period too. I start here. But we usually start at the one. Okay, let me put the asymptotes in. So whenever I have zero, I got asymptotes. So I can do it. There. There and one more. There we go, and then we'll put our, our curve in, and remember it touches the same place as the tip of this curve, and there you go. That's all you got to do. It looks a lot more complicated when you see these, or you see people doing these, and you go, wow, it's kind of complicated, but it's not. It's pretty easy. Now, I'm all messed up over here, see, I really... Fortunately, I use different colors, so I can see that this is going to be dark, so I can kind of work this over there. That's why you don't ever want to do this in ink. Do it in pencil so I could erase all that, move it around or something. And if you get some different colors, it's kind of nice to do it in colors. It might end up on the on the wall of fame. Okay? And then I could kind of do this one over here and show half of it anyway. And lots of times they do that. They show going up to the asymptote. It's always nice to continue the asymptote all the way up so you can Kind of see how the graph kind of hugs it. Okay, and there you go. I, that, that's not really bad to look at, is it? No. Okay. 
So I think we got everything marked. Make sure you're getting your mark your axes. I got to change my axes over here because I scratched out that X. I always try to mark your X and Y axes. Uh, zero. That's my my weakness is I forget to put the zero in. Excuse me. Okay. So there you go. Hope that helps.